So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome to another album review. Uh, and today, uh, well, you guessed it, because of Señorita Sabrosura shirt, we're talking about Marilyn Manson. And uh, uh, if I get more views, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> have to thank you for doing that. And remember, uh, people, she has a husband uh, who, who's being in the channel. So yeah, the new... Then we're talking about the new Marilyn Manson One Assassination Under God, Volume One, which came out on Friday, November the 22nd. So, Senorita, how are you? Good, good. Everything good over here. Good. So, so you bought that shirt when you saw him in concert a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was on August, a few months. Oh, time goes the, fast. I know. Time goes fast, but I remember you saw him and and you bought the shirt. Uh, so yeah, we're here to talk about this album. Uh, there's already some, some reviews out already for it, but we wanted to wait a little bit so we could discuss it together. So first of all, there are some interesting facts on this album. Uh, this is his 12th album. Again, he's collaborating again with Tyler Bates, but now he's like a full time member of the band. Yep. And the date that this came out uh, matches with the day that JFK was assassinated back in 1961, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, I don't remember the year, but yeah, yeah. it was the... the... No, I, I, but November 22nd. November 22nd. I remember 22nd. November 22nd. And it was in 1961. I was I found curious the title of the album One Assassination Under God, but then I saw it was the same day. Like I think everything he does is very calculated, and that yeah. was on purpose. Yeah, and this is not the first time that he's done like a JFK thing because if you remember, uh, in Mechanical Animals, the Coma White music video, uh, he he actually was playing. He played that scene in that music video, which yeah. is interesting. So for this album, obviously we're gonna have to talk about, you know, like a like is this like a this is a important comeback album because we all know that the last few years, uh, Fru Manson have been uh, full of you know many allegations, uh, which yeah. have been all over the place. So uh, a lot of scandals. Actually, yeah, I didn't think that this was gonna come out actually. Uh, I didn't. I I thought after uh, it's it's been four years without music or anything, and after all the allegations and the problems, I thought he was just gonna retire like quietly. Yeah, and I remember the last album he got dropped from that record label. Uh, but this is this is a huge combat because he's coming back with Nuclear Blast Records. Which yeah. when I saw that, yeah, that like, well, there's that's a very big record label, and they're known for a lot of like metal acts. So uh, I was intrigued when I saw that he was gonna come back, and also uh, the, when I saw the first video for uh, as sick as the uh, Seekers the Seekers within, within. He, he he looked like old man, so like he had yeah lost some weight. Yeah. Uh... When I saw him, uh, like I always said, like a few years ago, I was like, I don't want to see him. Like he's like uh, mm -hmm. past his prime. Like he doesn't look like the man song I knew when I was a teenager. So I wasn't interested. But then uh, he got these singles out and I saw he was he looks like the man song of the 90s. And the music, the, the first singles I like, it's like and. I, I said, okay, I got to see it. This is the time to see him now. And he looked like the Manson when I saw him in concert, like the Manson of the 90s. Yeah, and obviously the uh, the allegations, like what we would say about the allegations, like, you know, we don't, nothing has been proven. So uh, um, we're here to judge and, the music. And uh, like, mm -hmm. when did you draw the line like uh, like some people said you gotta separate the art from the artist and it's very hard to do in these times where every everyone gets canceled maybe for mistakes or or allegation that we don't even know if it's true uh 
so a lot of people told me like you can't be listening or going to a Manson concert like I'm sorry I, I, I was a fan when I was a teenager and this is the Manson that remind me and I couldn't see him when I was a teenager so this is the, the Manson that comforted me and made me like knew that uh There's a lot, a lot of uh, creepers and weirdos like me out, out there. So that's why I wanted to see him. Yeah, I actually, uh, I read his book back in the 90s. Uh, so I was surprised, like, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of, like, uh, like but I, I'm not cl going to claim here, like, I think he's a saint. No, I think, you Of know, course he's, no. We know he's not a <laughs> saint. he's not a saint. He's done a lot of, like, uh, you know, perverted things, you know, like in that, that book, The Long Hard Road Out of Hell, very interesting, it came back way back in the 90s and, uh, So I, when I then with delegations, I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm not surprised, you know, uh, because like uh, there's stuff with him, but you know, also it hasn't been proven. So uh, actually, I remember a few years ago, uh, I bought his last album. A lot of people, I was like, uh, should I listen to this? Uh, because that time, you know, it was very uh, like hot, like a like a like a like a evil like something like you shouldn't be listening to. But I think this proves a reason. I think cancel culture is kind of BS. Like, <laughs> like sometimes they get canceled, or uh, but sometimes they come back. So I, I don't think it's that true. Like, just take a look at what happens with politics. <laughs> like exactly, you <laughs> like uh, uh, you, you can see all the allegations and all the proof for these certain persons, and they get elected again. I'm not so, gonna say the name, but it's so like. I, yeah. And then you're gonna cancel me for because I'm listening to Manson. I'm sorry, but yeah. And 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 we listen to a lot of music that you don't even know what's happening with those artists. Yeah, no, that's true. So, uh, so this album, uh, uh, I've heard some positive reviews. <laughs> uh, maybe there, there's some negative reviews, but oh well. <laughs> but. To me, Yeah, uh, I saw like uh, mixed reviews, like a lot of good reviews, and but I saw a few like because yeah, they can't separate the art from the artist. yeah, but like we're here. We're going But to you talk have to about be like objective, the music. like you're judging the music and the album, not the the, the allegations. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not evaluating Manson here to be babysitter to my kids. Exactly. <laughs> Which would be a no. Uh, I'm <laughs> exactly. here to talk about this music. So uh, it's, first of all, like when he came back, I thought the singles uh, were really great. Uh, uh, the second single, Raise the Red Flag, that's what hooked me. I'm like, wow, this, I like the, the music. It sounded like more of like a mechanical animals type of era. Manson. Uh, And also something that Manson sounded like great in the vocals. I don't know, maybe they're using some trickery and they're doing like a few like backing vocals that he, he, making Yeah. it sound better. Uh, but you saw him live. How did he No, perform I saw him live? live and he sounded great. Like there's no uh uh other things there. So you saw uh what he is uh, right now, like and his voice sounded great. I, I was surprised. My husband told me, like, wow, I'm surprised like how good his voice sounds live. Yeah. And currently the band has, uh, there's Reba Myers from Code Orange on guitar. She's a great guitar player. I think the bass player was with Rob Zombie. I can't remember his name right now. And of course you, ha you have Tyler Bates doing guitar. So uh, Okay. And it seems the like drummer, a tight group. the drummer in this album is really good. Yes, the drums in this album are really good. So let's talk about first impressions when you first listen to this. But when I first listened to the single, I was like happily surprised of how much I like it. Uh, that first single, it, it's what got me. Uh, because it sounded like the old Manson. And then with the second single, the the one you said, uh, Raise the Man red flag. yeah, Raise the Red Flag, that excitement excited me. And like, I was happy, uh, intrigued by the, what's the album going to be. And then on the first listen of the whole album, I was like, oh, holy, <laughs> like what? 
uh, this is uh, a great album. And after a four years break and all the controversies, all the scandals, I thought it was a great comeback. I, I, I like I said, I didn't think he was gonna come back off after all that. Like, um. I thought he was going to retire. Like I saw back in the pandemic, a creepy video. Oh my God. That that's what nightmares are made of. Uh, uh, he was like dressing white and he was with Kanye West on the, like, you know, Kanye had like a church thing going on. Oh, yeah. It, it, it looked like a cult. It, that was scary. And, and I thought, well, he's going to go with the church with Kenya now and he's going to retire. He's not going to make any music because of the scam. That was creepy. And I thought he was never coming back. But when I listened to this, I was like, oh, my God, I got the 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 Manson uh, I like when I was a teenager. So I thought it was uh, a great album to come back. Yeah. Yeah. So the what about uh, this, you? So the song raised the red. I like the first single, but the song raised the red flag was it what got me like more excited. First of all, I like the the vocals on that one. Uh, because he's all talking about like you like he's being a target, you want to murder him. So he raises the red flag. And uh the part where he says, like, I don't give a fuck if you say I'm sorry, like yeah. it's got that that danger aspect. Uh, his last album I enjoyed, but it was like a more con. It was like a more weirder stuff. Uh, this is what I really want from Manson. Something that reminds me of his best era. That to me, his best era is Antichrist, Superstar, Mechanical Animals, and Hollywood. Yeah, those, that's those three albums. I think this album could have come after any of those three albums, and it has like that vibe. It has that similarity with yeah. those records. Uh, because uh, I, we'll talk more about tracks when, on the second round, but uh, I like also when the, he uh, brought out Sacrilegious, I thought that was more of like a, a dancier type of like uh, yeah, it's not, catchy more song. Upbeat. Yeah, super more upbeat, of, super catchy. Mm -hmm. and, and I enjoyed it as well. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, I like a line on that song that he says, you can't kill it until it's born. <laughs> which is obviously uh, uh, a nod to talking about abortion uh, yeah. in some way. So uh, I don't know. I hope I can say that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> don't demonetize me, YouTube. So yeah. So that's a that that was a like a more catchier number. And and I think on this album as a whole, like I think lyrically, this is the best songs that he's written in a long in a long time. But this, there was a few albums, like I remember one that when it, say 10, it's like when you say <laughs> I say 10, it was like very corny lyrics. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like that this is these are really good lyrics. And now he's like sober, like he's mm -hmm. writing sober. So that's interesting. Yeah, because that's a that's the topic of the first single that he put as Seekers the Secrets Within is talking yeah. about his uh drug addiction and how mm -hmm. he needed to get high and that wasn't alive so that's basically what that song is about so yeah i think lyrically here uh these are the best lyrics that he's written in years uh because the last albums uh i don't know lyrically they were like uh very like horny sometimes and uh he he had lost a lot of his edge to me at least yeah I, I enjoy them but yeah you're right like lyrically uh it wasn't that edgy. It wasn't, yeah. Lyrically, he was like retreading the same stuff and, and trying to be clever with saying Satan. But on this one, when I saw even the album titles, I'm like, yeah, this sounds uh, more thought out. And maybe, you know, he has those four years to think about it. And being sober also, I think, maybe helped the writing process. So, so yeah, it's nine tracks, 43 minutes in length, and we know there's a volume two coming yeah. uh, sometime, <laughs> hopefully next year. Uh, so, uh, Senorita, what what are your, besides the singles that we already talked about, what tracks really stood out for you? Well, I thought the album starts like really strong. Like the first songs are like really solid, uh, dark, and taking like a more aggressive tone. 
Um, I thought the the title album, the title track, One Assassination Under God, it's a great opener. I love the drums in this song uh, because they, it, the, it sounds more metal, less drum machine. I don't know. Like... It it sounds live, <laughs> like it's 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 a it's a person there, not a drum machine. Uh, and I thought it was great for setting the tone of the album. Uh, another song that got me it's uh, not if you understand. Oh yeah, uh, I think that's a, one of the greatest songs on the album. Uh, it gave me those uh, Hollywood vibes, uh, and it's like a declaration of war. And it it's it's again it, it gave me more metal vibes. Uh, it's it's like this album is a perfect blend of industrial, but it has those metal elements. And and this song, not if you understand, I love the the bass lines. It's very upbeat bass lines, and but the guitar riff mix, uh, I like it. Um, like I told you, uh, the single, the first single was my favorite. Uh. And I, but because I like the when he says keep sleeping, I'll I'll make you dream of me. It remind me of uh when he did the cover of sweet uh, sweet dreams. Mm -hmm. And I like that song because it has like a mix of everything: industrial, got rock, alternative. Uh, and then uh, another favorite was the the closer. Uh, I thought it was the perfect closer because the whole uh, first eight songs are very upbeat, very dark, aggressive. And this is like a calm down, a slower tempo. Uh, it was a, yeah. I thought it was an interesting way to close it He's done that in the past. Remember in Antichrist Superstar, he, yes. he finished with the, with the God that you, was it the God, the God that you hate or was the, the track will come back to me because uh, yeah. I, there, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was like an interesting way of uh, closing the album because like you needed to like calm down. It doesn't end in a high, but it's a really good song. And I think Manson's boy is impressive through the whole album, but yeah. he's the song... man that you fear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this song, I thought it was like uh, when he reached his peak uh, because mm -hmm. he can balance like the raspy, screamy, and then the falsetto. And I think we needed that to land the album. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good closer. So uh, for me, you know, it's nine tracks. So it's a it's a short album. But yeah. I think I think that's smart because I think it... If like if you have these four years and you don't know how it's gonna be perceived, I think it's smart to first come with a batch of songs and then come back with more because uh, I think it's smart because I think he's like testing the waters. Yeah. Uh, to see because yeah, this I thought summer, he could have done a, like a double album, but it's been four years, so it was smart to split it in two. I think he did it two more if we, tests. If you're getting tests. two, hopefully mm -hmm. more. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, because this year he opened for Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> I did I, mean, I did like, oh, that's... <laughs> I'm like, he shouldn't be opening for them, but I understand <laughs> why he was opening for them because this is basically... This is a... This is like a... Com this is a comeback. This is... Uh, this is a comeback that I think uh, wouldn't have happened, uh, but I was open to it since nothing was set in stone. I was actually... I was actually looking for new music and see where he would go. From this, uh, I, I was wondering maybe he'll be more tame, but no, he came up guns blazing on this one. It's a concept record, and obviously about him being the target, uh, yeah. which is something that he's been in the past. In the 90s with Columbine, he was blamed for that. So yeah. it, controversy has always it's been like a part of his shtick. Uh, so, but this time I really thought that he was done. Uh, so I'm surprised that it came out. To me, uh, the album opener, One Assassination Under God, is great. It's more eerie, but when it and the music video, I don't know if you've seen the music video. It's yeah. like a really simple music video of him alone. It's really great. Uh, then you have songs that remind me of uh, a heavier version of the Eat Me, Drink Me record with songs yeah. like No Funeral Without Applause, Death Is Not a Costume, and Meet Me in Purgatory, which I thought yeah. had like a 
like a more danceable uh, me, me yeah, in purgatory. Yeah, I don't like me, me in purgatory uh, could be a single because it's more radio yeah. friendly. It's, it's very more radio upbeat. friendly. I, I, but, I, I thought it was like pop, but dark pop. <laughs> and if you think it's about it, Marilyn song, Manson, dark. Marilyn Manson has also, uh, he may be like an industrial metal, but if you even think like his biggest is the beautiful people, there's there, it's got a pop sensibility to it. Yeah, uh, you remember that song they used it for a commercial for beer. Yes, so uh, <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Uh, to me, the fa my favorite single of the record is "Raise the Red Flag." That was my favorite single. Yeah. Uh, but I think the track that when I heard that track, I was like, "Whoa!" I wasn't expecting this aggression. Was not if you understand. Yeah. I think that's like it has it brought like uh, like vibes from uh, Antichrist Superstar in Hollywood. Uh, I like the bass line to it. I like if you land like not if you understand. It sounds pissed and aggressive, but also you can understand it. And it's got like a punk vibe yeah. to that track, which I really enjoy. Uh, so uh, the, because the album, you know, the, I think the album is pretty aggressive, but I think it's a great blend of every style that he's done. But mm -hmm. every song, uh, even the ones that are less aggressive, there has some aggression to them. And uh, also catchiness. Like you said, Meet Me in Purgatory. Uh, when I listen to it, I'm like, that could have been easily a single. Uh, yeah. That and Sacrilegious, I think, are the most like commercial, commercial tracks yeah. on the record. Because yeah, uh, it's like religious remind me of uh the song mutilation is the most for, sincere form of flattery from the eat me drink me uh album. Yeah, so there's it's, some it has that from, vibe. It's got that vibe. And I think Sacrifice of the Mass is got I like that it starts slower building and then the guitar comes. So it's a like yeah. a great ways because also it's like a sacrifice to a mass, like he's talking like a, a like like a like a church thing, so I think it's great. So, uh, yeah, the only is like, yeah, uh, I'm like, did I want it to be longer? No, I think the track, the for I think it's a great length because it doesn't overstay its welcome, but it also doesn't leave you like ah, oh, like like this feels unfinished. Uh, I can't wait to chapter two to see where it takes it because I think the story is great and I think this is the best lyrics that Manson has written in more than 20 years. The, yeah. Yeah, I the agree. best ones. And musically, the production sounds great. Uh, he sounds he sounds invigorated because on his last albums, he sounded a little bit tired. Uh, yeah. You're so right. This is what we think. So so hopefully uh, more music from Manson. So let's, what are your final thoughts on on this record, Senorita. Well, I, I think this is a great comeback album. This is a great record. Um, it has the, the it blends the elements of industrial, punk, rock, metal, the atmospheric synthesizers, uh, like perfectly. It, it, it does like a unique and captivated sound. And for me, like I said, it's the man song I knew when I was a teenager. But at the same time, like a more mature man song, like, uh, like I feel like he was more open, like with the single, like opening about his struggle and his addictions. But at the same time, he keeps saying, fuck you, I, I don't care. <laughs> so uh, I think it was like, a, I, I won't say like a return to form, but I think it's like uh, he got like uh, a second win. And, yes. I, and I think we have to give credit to Tyler Bates. I think yes. he's done an incredible job with the instrumentation, uh, like given like a cinematic atmosphere. And also, like I say, I really love the drummer. His name is Jill Charon. Uh, he has worked on film scores too. Like So maybe that influenced that cinematic uh feel that the album has too and like I said I try to judge the music uh, the art not the artist and for me this is a great album uh, one of his best albums in, in a lot of years and 
And I think one of the best albums that anyone has done in, I, I will say the best album and the best comeback for, because for me, the best comeback, <laughs> it was The Cure. The Cure. Yeah. But, but this is a great a comeback and a great album of 2024 too. Uh, so for me, it's a nine. Nine. Yeah. So yeah, I was going to say that like, uh, if the, the Cure hadn't released an album this year, I would say this would be the comeback of the year. But I say this is the comeback of the year that I thought was not possible. Uh, exactly. I really, I really thought Manson was over and out that this was not gonna happen again. And uh, I, if you're reviewing just based on the allegations and stuff, you're not being fair to him because you, like, yeah, if you if you don't like him because he, you think he's evil and obviously has done stuff, yeah, that's it, another topic. Yeah, take for example, Kevin Spacey. He's mm. done a, a lot of great movies and the movies are still great no matter what he did. And yeah. then you have proof that he did those things, but the movies are still great. He was a great actor. Yeah, And it's he a was. shame what happened. And like, he's not doing any more movies. He was canceled, but I still watch uh, old movies because I like them. Yeah. Yeah, and to me, uh, this album, I think, is the most uh, lyrically strong album that Marilyn Manson has uh, done in years. And uh, hopefully, Fums, <laughs> I, I fingers crossed, maybe at some time I get to interview him because uh, one of the, uh, the agencies that sends me music apparently represents him. So hopefully, that would be great if I could interview Manson great. sometime yeah. next year. Yeah. An interview focus on the music and focus on the music. I yeah. would be focused on the music and that and lyrics, and that's what I would talk to him about. So I think uh this album, uh, I enjoyed it of all the nine tracks. I don't think it has a weak track. I think it flows well. The production is great. Man sound sounds pissed and invigorated. Uh so I would also give it a nine out of ten. Uh great uh, record from Manson. Uh Obviously, I don't think he's, to me, his crowning achievements, his mechanical animals, Antichrist. Uh, but this with Hollywood, I think it would be like, let's give it a few years. And I'm excited for volume two to see yes. where he takes the music. So we want to know from you, Couchers, what do you think of Marilyn Manson's new album, One Assassination Under God, Chapter One? Are you able to separate the music, the art? from the artists and the music, or is it just something that you can get on board with? Comment down below and let us know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed it, let us know what are your favorite tracks from this record. So uh, coming up on the channel, I'm going to review the last album by Opeth uh, with Wesley from Moths, but that one is going to be in Spanish. So people, uh, you, you'll have to put the subtitles for it, but. <laughs> We're going to do a track by track of that one. And that one's going to be on Wednesday. And uh, for me, Senorita Sabrosura, uh, uh, the last video this year that we're going to do is our top five albums of the year. That will be in December. So uh, anything else you got going on in your channel, Senorita? Uh, not right now. Uh... Right now, yeah. I'm focusing on selling merch. So uh, if you want to uh, get gifts for your family, friends, girlfriends, whatever, uh, take advantage. I'm running a sale 50% off on the entire website. Uh, and that started on Saturday and it ends on December 7th. So if you want to take advantage, like everything, everything is 50% off just with the coupon code Black Friday. Yeah. And uh, uh, couchers, I have, I still have merch. <laughs> Friendless.com. If you want to buy that shit, go right ahead. If not, you know, watch my videos. So yeah, until we next time, yeah, yeah, we'll have we more. Money. Until, we want money. <laughs> until <laughs> next time, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch. Señorita Sabrosura. And we'll see you next time for our top five albums of the year. Thank you and goodbye.